Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Alpert? Here. Mr. Case? Here. Dr. Preferees? Charlotte Crane? Here. Ms. D. Tommaso? Here. Dr. Eberwein? Mr. Emerson? Here. Mr. Farella? Dr. Julinas? Mr. Locatel? Here. Ms. Lansbury? Need Ms. Lansbury? Here. Oh, good. Yeah. Mr. Stewart? Here. We got at least four people. We have. We have. Mr. Peter? Have plus one. Here. Do you have a quorum? Way. So he should be here. Okay. Uh, first up is a uh, response from the audience. We have an audience. Do we have any uh, responses from anybody? We hit the debris. Okay. <laughs> okay. No response from the audience. All right. So first up is uh, Stephen Affairs. Aiden. Um, so there's not much to report on since our last meeting. We had um, December break, and it's been midterms week this week for high school, so that means it's a half day every day. Um, since, but in the few meetings that we've had in school and like the classes, NHS has started planning a babysitting night for March for local families to bring their kids in for a night off. Uh, Green Umbrella is, which is the environmental group, is working on a trip to the Craneville and Kittredge to teach kids about um, climate awareness in the area. There's like been runoff problems on some of the roads and like the farms. So we're gonna go into classes and talk to them about that with some experiments. Um, students with from Bis Bus Buddies and National Honor Society are also working with Mr. Shannon, our dean, to organize something he calls a kindness campaign for March. Um, the program would look to promote social awareness and positivity in school face to face, making things um, better for students, especially in the hard time of the year in March, long month. Um, they were thinking of putting together like positive messages in the morning, maybe like lunch groups to initiate face to face communication like, throughout the day, even when like classes get tough for kids. And the spring musical has been announced, it is Into the Woods. Uh, and that's all I have for today. Right. Thank you. Any questions? Thanks, Aiden. And can you translate that kindness program out to the community? Large. <laughs> we're, we were thinking about like if it goes well, we could we could bring it into the community. Good. Yeah. Do that. <laughs> okay. Next up is the financial report. Warrants. Okay, so we have four warrants that were previously approved, and they're in your packet here. All right. Give some donations. Approval of the steep grant from Berkshire Taconic County Foundation. Be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee accepts a steep grant award in the amount of $995 from Berkshire DeConnick Foundation for mindfulness, supporting students and staff in embodying learning as recommended by the district treasurer. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion or questions? See if you're hearing it. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Extension? Motion carries. Next up is the approval of minutes from the Sunday report. Need that motion? Approval of um, minutes of the regular meeting of December 21st, 2023. There's no motion for that. No. Can I get a motion for that? Yes, you can. So moved. Second. Okay, a motion and a second for the minutes. Any discussion? Questions? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. All right, get right into it. The superintendent's report. Okay, so um, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, the main item on my agenda, which I'm going to get right into um, this evening, is the initial budget. Um, I will be presenting the initial budget to you in collaboration with our director of finance and operations, um, Greg Bueno. Um, just so you know, the, the process for developing the initial budget is in collaboration with the finance subcommittee, the school committee finance subcommittee. Um, but the, I think one of the important things to for me to say about at first starters, a couple things. One is that um, this budget for us is really an ever evolving process budget for us begins at the conclusion of our last budget season so as the year goes on we always have a mock budget we're always adjusting that budget 
So for us, while we're just presenting this to you tonight, this is a process that continues um, throughout the year. Um, one of the things I think it, that's also important to keep in mind is this is called the initial budget and what that means or the implications are that it's, this is very early in the budget process. So what that means is there are still some significant pieces of information right now that we don't know. So, and that's usually that this is historically the case. We present the budget to you in, in early January, mid to or mid January. There are things like health insurance. There are things like the governor's budget. We still do not have that information. So it is true. Tr historically, the budget has changed um, from what you'll see tonight to the tentative budget to adoption of the final budget. So those are things to um, really keep in mind um, as, as we go through this process. Um, a couple of things just to, to start out with, um, with, to start out with our goals. Um, uh, two, two, these are two of our primary goals. Um, it's been very helpful this year to have a solid strategic plan in place that we can look back on. Um, two of our primary goals are to create a budget that's fiscally responsible to the seven member towns while supporting high quality instruction um, and that aligns with district resources, including time, funding sources, human resources and property. So keep in mind too, another, um, one of the things that I always stress when I am presenting the budget is that we fully search for and utilize grant funding um, and which you will not see in this budget. So grant funding actually does provide resources for us as a district. And that's something that we are continually searching for. We're continually working on. Um, so that's a, that's an important part of the budget. Um, the other th thing that I wanted to mention about budget is this year um, in collaboration with my executive admin assistant, we've been doing um, really, really trying our hard to reach out to our seven member towns um, consistently to make sure that they know when we are having these budget meetings so that they are as informed as possible. And if you hear anything, you know, we want this to feel collaborative. We want it to, we want it to feel like um, we're working with our community. So if, if you hear of any questions as we go through this process, please let us know. The second goal is to really provide all our students with the highest quality equitable learning opportunities. Um, that includes our, we have an amazing um, staff. We have, we, have, we have amazing teachers um, that put students at the forefront. Um, these opportunities foster student achievement, which I know is one of the main um, priorities for our school committee. Um, we still focus on what we call tiered systems of support, which are general education in the classroom, um, interventions for students that need a little bit of extra. And then we also have systems of support that sometimes are special education or student services, sometimes just students that need substantially separate services. Um, so that's a component too. So we think of that basically in, in three different categories. Um, another huge component for us in terms of this budget is making sure that we're serving our students socially and emotionally because both academic and social and emotional, um, it, they're integrated, they, they, they complement each other. So we wanna, we wanna be there to support our students um, both academically and socially and emotionally. So those are, those are our two primary goals. There is a whole lot in this budget. That's that. There's a whole lot that's that's really behind those two goals. So this slide here shows some of the projected increases that we are seeing with the initial budget, um, F, initial FY25 budget. Um, a big piece of this is the active employee health insurance. So this is something that we do not know what it's going to be set at yet for FY25. The Berkshire Health Group will be meeting on January 29th, so that's a couple of Mondays away, where they will be setting the rates for the next fiscal year. Um, right now, looking at the figures at the health group meetings, I do um, expect an increase. I don't know what that increase is right now. Um, so this 10% increase in active health insurance includes both that increase for premiums, but we also had quite a few um, new employees join our insurance the last couple of years. So this is to give us um, to get us up to a place where our, that line item will cover the costs. Um, the next piece is retiree health insurance. That's a little different than the active em um, employee health insurance. The active employees run fiscal year, so July through, Ju or July through June. Um, retirees, they go calendar year, so January through December. So there was a five and 
five and a half percent increase on retiree health insurance this this January that started January 1st, which was in our budget. We were prepared for it. I do expect to see another. I don't know if it's going to be a five percent. We're going to have more meetings about that. But right now I'm setting aside five percent for retiree health insurance. Another big piece to this budget as we move forward is um, special education out of district tuition. So we did have a few students last year after the um, final budget in March go to out of district schools. So those tuitions were not included in um, last budget, but they will need to be included going into FY25. So this is only a piece of the increase. The next slide I'll show you a little bit more, but that line item is going up 365,000. The temporary ban principal and interest payment. That this is hopefully our last year seeing this um, band payment in our operating budget. We are very hopeful that we will be moving into the FY26 budget with the MSBA audit done, and we will be able to go out to um, bond for that remaining portion of the um, Wakona project. If you remember, quite a few years ago, we went out for 80% of the project. We have to go out for the remaining piece. So at most, the 20%. Um, right now, things are looking, so we should be coming in under budget for that last piece. Um, pupil tra transportation, we are going into year three of a five-year contract, so it is a 3% increase year over year. And the last piece is the Berkshire County Retirement Contribution. That is set by Berkshire County Retirement. Um, this year, we are seeing an 8% increase, but this will be, I believe, our last year seeing a larger increase. It is they have set up a new plan for contributions, so it should start leveling out in the following years. This next slide shows some offsets. So we did meet with finance uh, twice in the last um, December and January, um, where it was the recommendation to use some of that rural aid funding that we received um, to help offset our FY25 budget. And, and we were trying to be as creative as possible to use um, these funds. One piece is the funding we received this year. If you remember, we received one point, right around $1.3 million this year of rural aid. So our plan right now is to do prepaid special ed tuition. So there is, we are allowed to prepay for special ed tuition at most three months of a student's tuition. So we did go, I did have the special ed office look through our out of district tuition. Those three months is around 380,000. So we are able to prepay for that and it does not need to be in our budget for next FY25. The second piece is some prepaid expenses. I do have our director of technology and, and I'm looking at things that we can prepay in June with this FY24 rural aid money to help offset. So those expenses or um, those expenses will not be seen in the FY25 budget. The next piece is the FY25 rural aid state, state grant. We have not seen any allocations. There is nothing coming from the state yet that it's guaranteed for next year, but we have reached out on multiple occasions about what to expect for FY25. Um, in our communications, the, the state has been very cautious about what to expect in the future. They're very, but they're very hopeful to see the same amount um, in future years, at least what we received this year or last year. So right now we are offsetting next year's budget off by 450,000 in instructional salaries. If for some reason we do not get rural aid, there are backup plans that we can look at, at in the finance subcommittee to, um, to handle these salaries for next year, so. Are there any questions on that last this slide or the last slide on the increase or the offsets? So. Okay, so where we are right now, um, and I say right now again with um, with caution because this is where we're starting. Um, typically, this this will go down. Um, we are at a three point three five percent increase to our operating budget. Um, I usually get questions about where we were at this point last year. Last year, we were at a 5.86%. So I just wanted to, to add that information. So. so this slide here shows the initial revenue projections for next year. So our revenue has to match our expenses. So it matches that if you look at the bottom, that $31, or $31 million number that Leslie just mentioned. Um, not much has changed on this screen only because there's a lot of unknowns. For instance, chapter 70, I do have an increase of $1,000 there. Um, that is only showing what we are actually receiving this year. So last year in FY24, we um, we had a $9.5 million anticipated. We're actually receiving a little bit more. So that's why that number is just seeing a 1,000. We're, um, we don't expect to see a large amount increase in our chapter 70, but we are expecting to see the per pupil minimum. The, those figures will be coming out, I believe, in two weeks from the state. Last year, it came out much later because we had a new governor. This is her second year, so they should be, in, in the past, they've come out on that date. 
by the 12 o'clock deadline. So we should see them in the next couple of weeks. Chapter 71, um, this is, we are, we have seen a pretty consistent chapter 71 reimbursement through the state. In the past that has come in lower or it, we haven't seen what we were projecting. This is right around a 72% reimbursement rate on FY22 expenses or FY23 expenses, excuse me. Um, and I feel good about that number. The transportation revolving, if you remember back in July, school committee did vote to deposit 600,000 into the transportation revolving fund for this purpose. So that number and the E&D appropriation, that was also um, part of the budget guidelines. So if back in December, we reported out the E&D number, that is that number minus the 250,000 that we keep in E&D. Um, but that's a small increase of 12,000 year over year. Um, these other lines have not seen any changes with the exception of town assessments. I will say one thing to that is that there are a lot of unknowns with the insurance piece, with the state revenue, that number will change. But then you will see at the bottom line, it does match up with the 3.35 year over year. Um, so this next slide right now shows positions um, that we do not have in the budget right now. These are all ESSER funded positions. Um, when we did receive um, when we did receive ESSER funds um, initially, I think it was three or four years ago, it seemed like a long time ago, um, we did add some supports, student supports, um, primarily Title I tutors. We added five of them, um, an additional one at Beckett, Washington. So both of the small schools, Beckett and Kittredge, um, the smaller elementary schools have two Title I tutors. So one of those, one of those Title I tutors is ESSER funded. Um, Craneville currently has three Title I tutors. Um, they, two of them are ESSER funded. Um, we have a STEM position that is 0.5 at Nesikis, 0.5 at Wakona, that is also ESSER funded. So right now, those positions are not in the operational budget. So this slide should, sorry. Uh, can you go back? Yeah, thanks. Um, are those positions being discontinued because of the funding or because we don't feel the need that there's a need for it anymore? I think primarily that there's, um, I think primarily funding is definitely a component of it. Um, I think that what we'd like to try to do and what we're, what we're seeing is we would like to move toward um, licensed or more certified positions in ELA and math, because I think that's a need. Um, and I think if I were to, to move in any direction when it comes to support for students in some of those core areas like ELA and math, I would like to ultimately at some point replace that with um, licensed teachers um, that have a specialty area in ELA or math. For example, um, an example of that might be a reading interventionist. Anybody else? So this next slide shows our special revenue sources. Um, the graphs on the left-hand side, they just kind of show you that we are starting to level out where we were pre-COVID. Um, that one, all the way in FY23, we were still receiving some COVID grants, so you can see it's a little more inflated than the rest. Um, but this on the right-hand side, this is a new thing that I'm providing in this presentation and in the budget. It's um, the salaries from special revenue sources. So Salaries is the one piece in our budget really we have expected expenses hitting some of our grants or revolving accounts. There's not too many supplies where that happens. Um, but this is something that's always been happening in the background, but it has not been shown on screen or in the budget. So right now where we're sitting, the gross salaries for FY25 is right over $19 million. Um, the net salaries, which the towns are seeing in their assessments or we're seeing in the operating um, assessments is that $16 million number. We have an additional $2 million out of grants and just over a million out of revolving. And then I'm going to go through a couple of these just so you know. So um, like, for instance, the Student Opportunity Act, that is the grant we received, I believe, two years ago. This will be our final year with the Student Opportunity Act. So there are some certified salaries there. ESSER 3, this is something that we've been talking about for years that has been going away. It's not going to be here in FY25. In reality, ESSER 3 does go through September 30th. 2024. So there are a few months in FY25 where ESSER is still available to, available to use. So this, I did offset some of the salaries going into FY25. This just helps us move away from that ESSER funding altogether. Last year, we had $1.2 million in ESSER 3. Going into next year, we have 278. The following year, ESSER 3 will not be a thing. We will have no salaries in ESSER 3. Um, 
And the, the, if you look at rural aid, that 450,000, that is that number we were seeing earlier. So there is just over 450,000 in rural aid FY25. There are also a few revolving accounts that do see salaries um, with circuit breaker for special ed expenses, school lunch, which is, um, it's a self-sustainable program in the district. So the revenue from, from lunches, from state, from state revenue, they pay the salaries, they pay the expenses for food service. And then preschool that we have not been using the pre or we did not use the preschool um, revolving account last year because we knew we wanted to be hitting it this year. So last year we let it build up a little bit so we could put more salaries in the preschool revolving going into FY25. So in FY24, where we are right now, no salaries or salaries are being paid out of preschool revolving. But this is just to give, gives a little more information about what's happening behind the scenes, scenes with the operating budget. So this slide really gives you um, an indication of the number of students we have in each of our schools. Um, Beckett Washington has 91 students. Just to, um, as a refresher, that's a reduction of nine or 10 students. As you know, um, we did combine a, a pre-K -K class um, as a result of that reduction. Um, Craneville is, is an increase. Um, uh, the exact number of increases, I would say all the increases. So Craneville, um, Kittredge, Nessicus, they're all increases, um, except for Wakona. Wakona is really more, I would say, maintaining. So um, Beckett's the only one that I would say is, is down. Um, all of our other, Craneville, Kittredge, and Nessicus, um, all those schools are up, and Wakona is, is really maintaining. On the left side, you can see the percentage that that makes up. So that the, in, so for example, of the entire district, um, 6% is Beckett Washington. So 29% is Craneville, 11% is Kittredge, 23% is Nessicus, and 31% is Wakona. So we use this information, we use, we use this information to also look at our full-time salaried um, employees to see how close we are in terms of providing equity of, of services to our students. Um, and, and we do compare this. So this next slide is basically our certified full-time employees by school. So you can see, for example, I'm not gonna list all of them, but you can see in terms of, um, you can see the, the building administrators. We have, for example, one at Beckett Washington, three at Craneville, one at Kittredge, three at Nessicus, three at Wakona. Um, it also will show you the number of FTE teachers um, at the top. For example, Beckett, it's 11.6, Craneville, it's 32.8, Kittredge, it's 13.6. And just keep in mind, we're a small district, so we do share full-time employees. So that's that's why you're seeing the, the points there. Um, at Nessicus, it's 31.2, and Wakona, it's 49.3. So this is something we started providing last year. So, it, it, and we'll keep showing this in the future presentation. So if you have more questions at the next meeting or at the tentative, um, we will be providing this again. So just to get a little time to sink in. And then what we do is we look at um, FTE teachers and, and the percentage, how that, how that relates to the, the, the whole district. And then we compare that to the percentage of students that each school makes up um, and, it's it's fairly close. I mean, we want it to be close. I think the high school you're going to see um, is a little bit off, is a little bit higher. Generally, that's typical of high schools. And the reason it's typical of high schools is because you have more specialty areas offered in high schools. So you might have classes such as, you know, the arts are going to offer more. Um, they're going to have more options for students, um, more specialized options, for example, drama. Um, and or or business classes for our high school students because we um and that that's just you know this students when they go into high school have more opportunities and more options so that that's a little bit there's that's the only area i would say that we have um a smallish discrepancy i will also say though um that we are looking at the high school and if the, if we're always looking at these resources if we can share a resource with say the middle school um, we will look, we will look at that and we are looking at that. Does anybody have questions about these two charts? I have a quick question. Do you feel that these levels are appropriate 
and meet the needs of of students and and everything just looking at craneville it's you know that I, mean, I, I do five percent or so. the only thing I, I where i would look right now and where i will be honest with you we are looking is we're looking at what kind of we want students to have those choices but we also want to make sure we have um uh, ratios of teachers to students that are equitable across the middle school and high school. So we are looking at that. Are there any places where we could um, share a teacher where we could bring class size down at the middle school a little bit? Because our middle school, as you can see, our middle school's growing. Um, it's it's slow growth, but um, Craneville, the middle school, um, are both growing in Kittredge. And so that's something that we're we're keeping a close eye on and we're looking at. So the last piece of the, um, the initial budget is the capital budget for the town, um, town assessments. So this is something that stays the same. Um, the initial budget should be the same as the final. A year over year, we should be seeing a 30, or we will be seeing a $3,600 um, decrease year over year. I will say the one piece of this is the last year we'll have the Beckett renovation uh, as a capital project that comes off the books in FY25. So when we move into the FY26 budget, we'll be down one capital project. So after tonight's meeting, both the um, the budget presentation and also the budget profile, which we've been doing the last couple of years, will be provided on the website. Um, the budget profile, I still have a few items to add on there, yep. um, but it, it will be changing. Things will be added throughout the budget season. So that when I add important things, I'll make sure you guys are aware. And then by the next, I, I believe it would be it would probably by the next finance meeting, we will have um, numbers about insurance. Um, we should have more information about the governor's budget. We bring that back in a subcommittee. Again, all you know, the select board members are invited. These are all public meetings. Um, and the next, the next budget that we present to you will also have that information. Yep. Yep. So there'll be some adjustments based on what we what we have found out. Are there any questions? If you do think of any in the next couple of weeks, uh, please feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. That, that's really all I have, unless anybody has any questions for me. Um, just trying to do a good job following those delays and whatever. <laughs> but I, <laughs> it's always a challenge in um, when you have seven towns and um, some have much higher elevations. <laughs> I don't have anything else. Okay, next up is myself, the uh, filling the vacancy. So as promised from at the last meeting, um, we'll go back to uh, our legal counsel and discuss methods of doing this vote and um, what the committee asked for was a ballot type process. And we can do that and we, we will do that if that's what folks want. It's kind of a pre vote, but it's basically a way to gather data to make a decision as to, you know, who of the three candidates that are vying for it, their emotion should be made for because we'll have data from. So, what we intend to do is have a ballot of three, the three candidates on a piece of paper with your name on it, and you will we'll hand those out and you will fill out uh, either a check mark or a rank or whatever, how we set it up. But, anyways, We'll bring those in and we will, can't do this secretly, we have to read off your name and who you put on as the person you want to be on, you know, your your preference for the for the motion. And we'll go through and read everybody's uh, results from that and tally it up. So it should be obvious as to, maybe it won't be, I don't know, but I'm guessing, you know, there'll be a, a clear winner of, you know, who should get, uh, there should be a motion. There has to be a motion made for somebody to be that to fill that vacancy, and hopefully people will recognize that if there was somebody with the majority of the of the tally, that would be the person you would ask. Yeah, send a motion for first. So, and if that person doesn't get elected, then then it would be the next person. But that way, there's a, some data behind who the motion is for. Doesn't have to be that way, but that's a method to get it to what you guys asked for. And re regardless, in the end, we have to have a motion 
there has to be a motion for the candidate and then a, a uh, vote in open, as well as this ballot has to be in open. It can't be in secret. So I don't know if anybody has any questions or concerns with how this is going to go or or if they, you know, I mean, I, I it, to me, it seems uncomfortable, but I get how it seems kind of whoever gets picked on first to make an emotion. This way we have some data behind it. So I do think it's good in that respect, but you will have to, uh, it will be uh, out loud. I will have to read the names and what was voted on. So that that piece doesn't change. Dave. Um, in the off chance that there's a tie between first and second, would we then have a runoff ballot between those two? It's really, if there's a tie, I mean, honestly, it's, um, I mean, the committee, the next thing the committee needs to do is just make a vote. Somebody needs to make a motion. And it, it should be one of those two people. And then you vote on them straight up. So then we're back to essentially the original process. Pretty much. Trying to it's a tie, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I don't know. We could prepare a second ballot to say, or maybe what we, why don't we do ranked choice voting? First, second, and third, then there's no ties. That's like, okay, we'll do it that way. I mean, I guess potentially there could be a tie, but yeah, so it'd be a lot better. So rank your one, two, and three. And um, I think if we do that, then we have to do the math and add that up. But it's interesting. I think it's a lot easier just to have a vote. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, the risk of the runoff. <laughs> yeah. Runoff ballot. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Which could be recorded by our secretary and just a voice. I guess what we could do is we could prepare for the we could prepare for that eventuality. Just in the rare chance. Yeah, I don't see that happening, but you know, because there's three candidates, that's that's the other thing. There's three candidates. So divided between three, it's a tough chance that it would be a, a tie, but you know, plus we're fifteen people. If all fifteen of us are there, you know, they're fourteen. Yeah. Yeah. 14 or five votes. Yeah. 14 votes. That's right. Sorry. You're right. Because there's 14. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So I, uh, would the vote on the motion be a roll call vote or a standard? It, it, can, be, it can be a standard vote. Um, you know, everybody's here. We're not doing a remote. It can be a standard vote. You know, all in favor say aye. If there's dissents, you know, obviously we make note of the people who are dissenting or abstaining. If it's close, then we may have to do a roll call. Like if it's hard to tell, then we might have to do a roll call. But we can do a standard I, nay, that sort of thing. Yeah. But we but when we do the ballot, we will be reading off the names and what the word. Any others? Are we okay with that process? You guys any objections to that process? Okay, then. On the 25th, we will be doing that vote <laughs> in that method. Okay, so the only other thing I have is the uh, MASC training date is going to be the 31st on a Wednesday, not on a Tuesday. So um, that's training. So new candidate will be on board, and it's actually training for all of us. And it'll be at uh, 6 o'clock at Mesicus. And, uh, you know, we will provide sustenance for that meeting. And it's, uh, you know, it's MASC, which is just really valuable training. So I hope everybody uh, attends that as well. I'll and be in Texas. Bar Bonnie will not be here. She'll be in Texas. <laughs> Let it be known. Okay. Next up is, uh, is the subcommittee report. So first up is uh, curriculum. And Helen is not here. Oh, curriculum. Oh, let me uh, <laughs> give you a pin ahead if you want to. Um, well, there are only two of us here from that meeting. Okay, so we met on Tuesday. Um, you're going to get a fuller report next uh, meeting because uh, I didn't take notes, but mm -hmm. I did. We we heard that from health and wellness about the state curriculum. Is, is that, that person here tonight? No. Okay. Um, oh, so uh, basically, the health and wellness. Uh, uh, curriculum is based on what the state is doing. And uh, everything uh, is coordinated between the elementary, the middle school, and the high school. And uh, all the staff, as I understand it, uh, will be aware of what 
the goals are and how certain issues are being dealt with. Um, okay, uh, parents will have with social emotional part of it, uh, parents will have the possibility of having their child, uh, we're talking about in the high school and, and the middle school, I believe, that they could, uh, they could opt out if they so choose, um, but they'll be made aware of what generally what's in the curriculum and what's being presented to the children. Okay. Um, so that was, that was uh, one thing we did. Um, we also heard from Mr. Henault about uh, very quickly about uh, the fact that there are two um, reading uh, language arts reading programs that are being looked at at this point and being kind of tested by various teachers. Um, and it's only a, a two month uh, or six week. Uh, Our goal is to um, start the pilot in early February and have a decision by um, April vacation. And basically that has to do with the fact that that money has to be spent by the end, by June 30th, otherwise they lose the money. So the, the decision has to be made, but it is being field tested. Both of them are being field tested and that's going on. And we, I, I actually received a letter from the governor today um, that we got, we did receive the $100,000 grant for implementation. So we've been waiting on that and we did actually receive the, we didn't receive the money, but we received the letter guaranteeing the money today, which is exciting. So we'll have both the, be able to pay for the curriculum for multiple years and a multi-year professional development support plan um, that we can pay for up front and use the grant funding for that, so. And the third thing that we uh, heard about is the uh, overnight uh, field trip to Norwood, Massachusetts. That's for, and so I have a, uh, something to be voted on, read it. Be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee approve an overnight field trip on March 2nd and 3rd, 2024 for the Wakona business class to attend the Business Professionals of America State Leadership Conference and competition in Norwood, Massachusetts, uh, as recommended by the curriculum subcommittee. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions, discussion? It's a weekend trip. Students go there and um, basically, they, they, it, it's not being, we're not funding it. We're, we are providing transportation there, and, and that's about it. The, the students themselves, the parents and students, have to pay for the overnight. Um, and uh, we only have a couple of students going, but uh, they will be participating. And we've, we've just, we've had a couple of students in the past that have really shined at that competition and been recognized and won awards. So while we don't send a large group, the, the students that we send, um, they do they do very well and we're very proud of them. So um, it's a great opportunity for our students. Yeah, and it does, we do this pretty much every year. We send some people. Mm -hmm. have a vote. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Okay, and the only other thing is we have a tentative uh, meeting on February 13th, and we have a meeting set up for, uh, for March, which I didn't put the date down unless you did. So. Uh, 14th? 14th? 14th. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, it's I'll be determined. Here. Be determined. Yeah. Any other? Yeah. Uh, for, the, for the two ELA programs that are being tested, uh, what, where are they being tested at? Um, so the, we, we have a curriculum um, council that meets at, at least monthly, um, and we've, we've developed a plan um, the the as of right now, um, we have 21 elementary teachers who have um, asked to be part of the pilot and four who have um, requested additional information. So we'll have up to 25 elementary teachers who will be um, on two teams um, and each curricula set of curricular materials will be um, piloted by 
um, a team in K2, 3, 5, and then our middle school. Um, right now we have three teachers who are, will be piloting um, for sure and, and possibly two more. Um, so it'll be in every grade group across the district. It, it's, all it's, it's all the elementary schools and in the middle school. So all yeah. three elementary schools and the middle school. Any other questions? All right. Thanks. <laughs> Moving on to finance. All the finance committee uh, met on January 3rd, um, and we mainly discussed the initial budget, which was just for the right. so <laughs> we'll go into the details too much there. Uh, we also briefly chatted about uh, the regional agreement amendment discussion, um, talking about how the full school committee will need to vote on approving the regional agreement amendment before the annual town meetings. We also had an update from the towns. Uh, member Lacatel let us know he attended a recent Green Dalton Committee meeting, and there was discussion about uh, potentially pursuing possible solar grants for roofs on Central Berkshire Regional School District schools. Um, and a suggestion was made to potentially invite them to a future meeting after the MSBA audit of Wakona is completed. Um, we set a, our next meeting is January 30th. Uh, 6.30 here, um, and we will continue our budget discussions at that meeting. Any questions for the hall? Thank you, sir. Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Dave. Uh, just the regional agreement. Um, be in this? The amendment? That's what I had. Oh, okay, no, I just, I was, just wasn't sure what the yeah. amendment was. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, next up is uh, policy charge. Um, so we have not met since our uh, previous full school committee meeting. Um, I am awaiting an email back from Ms. LaFond regarding her availability, um, and then I will be in contact via email. Okay. Any questions for Sharon? All right, uh, next up is personnel. Um, do we want to move personnel to the end because we're going into executive session? Or I would suggest uh, delaying it until the end because we have an audience. So okay, any uh, concerns for that? Okay. So after that is um, safety and wellness. Safety and wellness hasn't met since uh, our last full committee meeting, and we will be meeting again on January. 17, so next week, to discuss um, emergency drill protocols. Thanks. Any questions for Lewis? All right, now we're going to building project. As you heard just earlier, we're, we just have our last band. Hopefully we're in, we're in the audit phase now, so hopefully that'll get us. We concluded and we don't have any more bands and this uh, project will be uh, done. Uh, then the regional ad hoc agreement. Not much to report there. Um, we are rapidly approaching the due date that we expected feedback from the towns. Right. I'm still waiting on some towns to get back to us. Um, we've had some comments from Dalton and from Cummington today. Yeah. Uh, so the 15th is the date that we anticipated mm -hmm. getting it all back. So hopefully we get it back by then. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? On that, okay. Um, just just for everybody's awareness, because I'll, I'll mention this again, because I've said it before, the regional ad hoc agreement ad hoc committee is still live. They might not have anything to do if there are changes that require me to get together again. But we're keeping it alive just because there might be that eventual need. So, all right, the superintendent evaluation. Ad hoc. Okay, we haven't met since our last. Uh school committee meeting however we do we have uh, a meeting we will be having a meeting in february with the superintendent to go over uh progress in terms of the goals uh that were set uh the date to be determined okay. all right so that leads us to uh old business or new business but we need to go into the personnel executive session so if there aren't, aren't any questions, can I get a roll call to go into executive session for the 
Mr. Albert? Yes. Mr. Case? Yes. You should read the motion first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yep. Sorry about that. <laughs> It resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee go into executive session at, uh, at 7.41 p.m. in accordance with MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A, 2, and 3, to discuss strategy for negotiations with non-union personnel, including the superintendent, the teachers' union of the SBEA, and the paraprofessional unit of the SBEA, and to review and approve minutes of prior executive sessions for which the chair has declared an executive session is necessary to protect the bargaining position of the committee and to reconvene an open session at the conclusion of the executive session. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second. Now a roll call vote, please. Mr. Albert? Oh, yes. So, but, can you just read the time that we went out? I said seven, seven forty six is what I said. You said okay. forty one. Thank you. So. I said thought you said I'm, seven forty one. Yeah, no, I smoothed a slip of my tongue. That's okay. Thank you, Mr. Albert. When you stop it, yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Mr. Case. Yes. Charlotte Crane. Yes. Ms. D. Tomaso. Yes. Mr. Emerson. Yes. Mr. Farella. Yes. Mr. Locatel. Yes. Ms. Vladimirovsky. Um, Ms. Ms. Lounsbury. Yes. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Okay. We're now out of executive session, no. so can I get a motion for the approval of the renewal of superintendent's contract? The end result that the school committee agrees to rewrite the contract of Leslie Blake Davis as superintendent for the period from July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2026, and to set our salary for FY25 at $178,800, add an additional holiday as required by the state and incorporate other provisions of her prior contract as recommended by the personnel subcommittee. Motion and second, any questions or concerns? Seeing none hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mentions? Motion carries. All right. Moving on to any old business, any new business? Remarks for the good of the committee? I have one, we just missed Patrick's 1,000 1, point. He just did it, I was hoping maybe it was the second point, but he just scored 1,000 point and the gym down below here. So congratulations to the McLaughlin family. So anything else? Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. Um, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried.